All right, today we're going to be uh, focusing on Heidi Baker. For those of you that don't know who she is, she is notorious for one who is always drunk in the spirit. And in my opinion, it's a mockery of the sober-mindedness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But she recently came out and uh, spoke at Kenneth Copeland's church. Now, Heidi's done speaking. She's wrapped up her message. And here comes Mr. Kenneth, tube full of demons, Copeland. And he's going to prophesy over Heidi. And this is where it gets really creepy. Please listen to this whole thing. Now, we've seen this type of thing before where other prophets prophesy over other prophets. And it's, I challenge anybody to find one of these where the prophet speaks bad things. It just never happens. It's always good things. And, and it's usually over the top, you know, uh, prophecies of blessings and more blessings. And then when you think they're done, more blessings. This is no different, but this is way over the top. And so we need to examine this. Um, what is your prediction? You think Kenneth's going to prophesy anything bad over her? Well, the answer, of course, is no. But uh, let's give this a listen and we'll comment as we go. For the word of the Lord has come to me saying, faithful, faithful in little, faithful with more, faithfulness in my eyes, in many ways greater than sacrifice. You've been faithful to go where other people were afraid to walk. But Sarah counted me faithful and I gave her her dream. I gave her the child of her dream. Abraham counted me faithful. And because of the blood covenant between the two of us, he was fully persuaded that I was able to do what I promised. Faithful as a servant, faithful as a child, then as you grew up and matured as a believer and walked faithful in places, now I have given you favor. I have given you and Roland favor in places where people hated you and wanted to kill you and I'm changing their minds and changing their hearts. You've been faithful with my unwanted children and now there are many will come to you who are not destitute but they'll fall on their face before me because of your faithfulness. And you've walked with me, me these many years. Because of it, I have added years to your life. Now that sounds a little reminiscent of what Cat Kerr said to Robert Bullock when Cat Kerr screamed at him, make no plans to die. Check that video out. It's in my library. It's pretty hysterical. But yep, so added years because of her faithfulness. And the favor, my favor, my grace, my goodness is falling in the hearts of men and women in this country, in the United States, where so few know of you and Roland. I am giving you the United States. I am giving you this place and open. Did you hear the gasps out in the audience? <laughs> and I know. I, I know, I, I've got to slow down here. The people in the audience, they all think that Kenneth Copeland is a real prophet. And this is really God speaking through Kenneth Copeland. So just remember that. Opening it up to you. And you'll go back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> then will come Canada. You will go to the far north you will go to the Inuits. You will go to those places where the suicide rate is so high because of the darkness half of the year. <laughs> then they will hear of you in Peru and Venezuela in the southern part of the earth <laughs> and the rejoicing in heaven is immense. There are people that you have never met that are in heaven with me now because of the words that you and Roland have preached, taught, and people you've cared for. 
<laughs> there was a young child. There was a, a young woman that heard you. You never met her. Either one of them. The young child grew up and now has a family. And her baby died and is with me today because of you. Good grief. Can you believe what this man is telling her? This man is a false prophet. He he's actually made such proclamations over the years, even to the point of, uh, in one of his sermons, uh, saying that God failed. And he's just making this stuff up. But, you know, the good thing is, I, I don't think Heidi, well, I know she doesn't believe him. She knows this is just all a show. But there's people out uh, that listening to this guy that think that this is legit, that he's getting this information from God. But what a thing to say, huh? Well, the child died. Well, what's the point if this were real? What would be the point of God telling this to any person? The older woman was murdered. But she's with me. <laughs> and, then, and by the way, the older woman was murdered. The baby died. The older woman was murdered. They're all up with me. Just thought you should know that, Heidi. Just a little, little nugget of info. <laughs> Jeez. Have you not understood, and has it, has, it, has it never occurred to you that a baker is one who prepares bread? So now he's going to do a play on her name, Heidi Baker. Has it never occurred to you that a baker is one who prepares bread? So this is schmoozing. Uh, but again, this is all theater. This is all show. She pretends to sob on the podium there. And the night that I was betrayed, I took bread. <laughs> and I broke it. And I said, this is my body broken for you. Eat it. So he made that, <laughs> he made that whole tie-in from her last name, Baker. Baker bakes, a baker bakes bread. And, oh, by the way, remember when, you know, the disciples were gathered in the upper room with me and I broke bread? This is just, uh, I, I don't have a word for it. You have become bread for the eater. <laughs> so he tells Heidi that you have become bread for the eater. Heidi, I guess, is the bread of life, not Jesus. Now, some of you might think that I'm stretching this. I, I'm not. This is blasphemy right here. This is absolutely ridiculous. And you've shown yourself. <laughs> you died. What? <laughs> did, did he just say you died? Is that metaphorical? Obviously. Or maybe he thinks that she died and, and somebody raised her. I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. But now you stand very tall in my sight, saith the Lord. <laughs> so look, look, look at this guy. He is so fake. He's absolutely demon possessed. This is all a show. This man makes his uh, living mocking God. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. For a king needs a queen. And in my sight, you are my queen. <sighs> did, did you hear the audience? There, there was a slight gasp out in the audience. This man just said that Heidi Baker, as, as he pretends God is speaking through, he says, he says that God says, Heidi, you are my queen. Not a queen. You are my queen. There's something weird going on here. Something very, very, very strange. And Roland Baker. Now he's going to talk about Roland, her husband, because he kind of realizes, whoops, what did I say? Oh, yeah, you're married. <laughs> and, and by the way, 
she is not God's queen. I, I, I know that I, I shouldn't have to say that, but just in case some people are believing that this is legit, this is so ridiculous. Is a king in my sight. So Roland's not his king, right? Roland's just a king, but Heidi is my queen, thus saith the Lord. This is just wow. For the precious ones, the unwanted ones, are in my hands now. Heidi can't take it. She's slipped down below the podium here. And I've shown you in the low places, but you've grown up, not chaff, but wheat for the bread. And now I'll show you in the high places. There will be people that will hear of your story in palaces. People of great wealth will hear your story and their hearts will break and they'll come to me. Good grief. So here is kind of saying, God is saying, people in palaces, wealthy people in palaces will hear her story and come to God. Not the, not the story of Jesus Christ, not the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's not going to be the reason they come to God. The reason they're going to come to God is after hearing Heidi Baker's story. Can, can you just say creep factor 11, creep factor 1 billion? Is this just, it's an absolute circus, an absolute circus. These people have no reverence for God as they get up there and put on their pretend theater and mock the living God. People are going to hear the story of Heidi Baker and come to God. Wow. This ministry will be known from the ski slopes of the world, oh. further into the jungles. Can you imagine the ski slopes? <laughs> Why would he say the ski slopes? What do you, you got some like snowboarders up on the slopes? Hey, bro. Hey, bro, what's up? Bro, did you hear of Heidi Baker? Have you been to her ministry? Have you experienced Heidi Baker, bro? Now, they're having this conversation while they're, what, skiing on the ski slopes? Bro, let's go to the Heidi Baker revival tonight. Yes, we've heard of her. Gnarly, dude. For you see, my angels have been working towards this for a long time. And the angels that I have assigned to you, oh, if you only knew how many times they saved your life. And you, you, you know, you've always got to bring angels into it because that's, that's, you know, that's a key word. That's a buzzword. Bring the angels in. They've been working behind the scenes, blessing your ministry. Now stand up. Long pause. Kenneth didn't know what to say here. You know, he's he's thinking. Up on your feet. <laughs> Raise your hands and begin to rejoice. Yeah. Now, do you see any tears on her face? Any tears? I know she had her Kleenex, but for as much as she was sobbing. Rejoice! Again, I say rejoice! Yeah. And no! So now you got to throw some tongues in there, right? I mean, everything, all the ingredients are thrown in here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Heidi Baker? That's possession right there. That's manifesting. Did you see that? Hold on a second. Watch this again. Uh, Heidi Baker? Do you not understand? Good grief. Is that, that's very troubling. 
It's very troubling to see that, that there's something wrong. And I, and I think that this is the result of preaching a false gospel. These people are in a separate state of mind, and that mind is not of God. There are familiar spirits at work here. Did you see her laughing like that? That was very, that was very troubling. Have you never understood that my covenant son Abraham saw Isaac raised up in a figure? And he offered his only begotten son because I knew the day would come when my only begotten son would be offered. Thank you, Jesus. But I saw him raised in a figure. Oh. <laughs> And I just see waves. You, you, you come from a place that's... Waves. A lot, of, a lot of heat there. And you look off in the distance and the heat waves. And, and I see it. This little heat wave. Beyond creepy. This little heat wave. Boy, I, I got to tell you, this is something else. Oh. All around you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and I see Roland. <laughs> And his big hat. Yeah. Whoa. Howdy, ma'am. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> now you got your horse. I didn't get mine. <laughs> you can ride mine. <laughs> I'll ride yours. What did you? How creepy did that sound right there? She says, "I'll let you ride my horse." He says, "I'll ride your horse." Woo! That's that's it. Let me uh, let me back that up here. Now you got your horse. I didn't get mine. <laughs> you can ride mine. I'll ride yours. <laughs> Good grief! I can tell you, as if that was. Oh, can you imagine Roland? Now Roland is her husband listening to this. You can ride my horse. I'll ride your horse. What? I I don't know what to say. I'm I'm just kind of stunned that this all happened live on stage. I'd go to my grandfather's farm. There's a boy that had one of the most beautiful paint horses, and I rode with him. Oh. We just rode that horse bareback and rode it around my grandfather's side. I'm going to get you one of those. That horse has never showed up. <laughs> but and she has to sit there and laugh and laugh and laugh and manifest while talks about horses, and he's bragging up there. Horses are not cheap, contrary to the story, what you're going to hear right here. But she has to sit there and listen because she knows what's coming at the end. And get ready, you're going to see what's coming at the end here. Ellie came in one day and she said, I was packing, getting ready to leave. She said, Dad, I want a horse. I said, okay. I said, she said, will you agree with us? I said, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 you want a horse. Okay, okay. I said. Went on out to California after one of the meetings. She, one woman came up, she said, Brother Copeland, I have a horse I was about to sell for a little over $3,000, but somehow, I just know in my heart it belongs to your daughter, Kelly. <laughs> that thing was 15 and a half hands high. Wow. <laughs> out of Tim Tam. And I got back, I said, Kelly, when, you didn't believe for the ranch. <laughs> and out of that, one of the most beautiful Palomino horses I've seen in my life was given to me, so I finally got my horse. Yay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. So, oh. so does anybody want to sow to oh, some seed God. into Heidi Baker's ministry? Go ahead and be seated. <laughs> so there's the payoff right there, right? So does anyone want to sow a seed into Heidi Baker's ministry? It's just, you can't make this stuff up. They just watched this dramatic prophecy from one of the worst and verifiable false prophets on the face of this earth who has built more money out of gullible followers than any, I don't think anybody that's ever lived. And, and, and it's very heartfelt and touching. And then they talk about horses. You have horses, I have horses. After going through all this, and then, and then Poindexter steps up here and says, so who's ready to sow a seed? And all the crowd says, yay. Why? Well, because they've been thoroughly entertained. This is all entertainment. This will just take a few more minutes. What a great day this has been. Wow, what a present. Somebody's waving, waving money at me. She's ready. Somebody's waving money at this guy. They, they are. They literally do. They're all there. They know that they've just witnessed lies. 
not all of them, I think many of them do believe, but deep down inside, I think they know it. It was all theater. And so now they take the offering and there's the payoff. That's what we've been waiting for. Heidi does her crying. Kenneth does his fake prophesying. And then again, Slim sticks up here and and he says, let's get ready for that, that offering. Now that you're all in this emotional state, let's empty those pockets and fill the coffers. Now, as I wind down this video, I, I want to let you know I'm not trying to be me. I have a genuine concern for those who are being deceived by actual and confirmed wolves. And, and the reason I'm concerned is because I care about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I care about the death burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The good news is Jesus. The good news is not human beings who put themselves up on pedestals and then do these fake prophecies over each other and everything great, 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 blessings, 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 so on and so forth. Uh, you know, the world would just be, you know, dead without these prophets. That's what they want you to believe. But the power of the gospel is in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The good news is Jesus Christ. He is the bread of life. He is the one whom people will seek for salvation. Not human beings. Nobody's going to be talking about Heidi on the ski slopes for crying out loud. People need to hear about Jesus Christ. And this is why we push back against these wolves. Now, just for the record, this is what was spoken over Heidi Baker in that alleged prophecy. And look how ridiculous this is. God has added years to her life. Number two, God is giving Heidi the United States. Whatever that means, I don't know. But apparently the United States is going to be Heidi's. And then Canada. Number four, people will hear of Heidi in Peru and Venezuela. They won't necessarily hear about Jesus. They're going to hear for some reason about Heidi. Number five, Heidi has become bread for the eater. This is a takeoff of the bread of life or the bread broken in the upper room. Either way, it's where Jesus uh, conveyed and spoke that he was the bread of life. This is my body. It's not Heidi Baker's bread just because her last name is Baker. Good grief. Number six, Heidi died. I, I don't know what he meant by that, but it's ridiculous, right? But now apparently stands very tall in God's sight. Number seven is, you know, the pinnacle right here, where Kenneth Copeland says, God says in his sight, you, Heidi, are my queen. Utterly ridiculous. And notice that there was no objection from Heidi, right? She didn't say, oh, oh wait a second. That's not right. Nope, she just took it all in, and that's right about where she collapsed under the podium because she, she was feeling it, I guess. Uh, number eight, her husband, Heidi's husband, Roland, well, he's just a king. Not my king. He's a king. Heidi is my queen, thus saith the Lord, apparently. Number nine, people in palaces will hear Heidi's story. Their hearts will break, and then they will come to God. Not Jesus' gospel story, no. That's not why their hearts are going to break. That's not why they're going to come to God. It's going to be because of Heidi's story. And then number 10, Heidi's ministry will be known from the ski slopes <laughs> of the world to the jungles. All kinds of dudes, you know, hitting the powder, swaying, swerving, talking about Heidi. For some reason, the ski slopes, they're going to know <laughs> they're going to be that generation that's going to be talking about Heidi. So absolutely ridiculous. Now, as I close up this video, Romans chapter 16, let's start in verse 17. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Do you understand that these people, the simple, are always going to be there? 
And people like Heidi Baker and Kenneth Copeland know this, and that's why they put on their shows. And right as you're at peak emotional condition, they step forward and say, who wants to sow a seed into this ministry? And people do. Serve Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity and sober-mindedness. Until next time.